my country, which was honored to chair the preparatory committee of the Durban Review Conference, uh, calls upon all members and observers uh, to have a sense of responsibility in uh, achieving a final document uh, which constitutes uh, a framework to assess uh, the uh, progress achieved in the implementation of the DDPA. The Islamic Republic of Iran has contributed $40,000 to the Durban Review Conference. That it will be contributing the amount of 150,000 US dollars to further the work and objectives of the Durban Review Conference. In the teeth of serious racism, the Durban Review Conference provides international community with an important opportunity to take stock of the past and to open up new prospects for the future. The effective implementation of the Durban's agreements is not only essential in the fight against racism, it is also a debt owed to millions of victims of these abominable practices throughout the world. The peoples of the world are eagerly awaiting the results uh, of the Durban Review Conference, which is only a few weeks away. Uh, these victims and the peoples of the world are hoping uh, that uh, the international community will do justice uh, to their cause. Which UN Watch, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Racism is evil. How can we truly fight it? For starters, by clearing up three myths about next month's conference. Myth number one, that the new draft removes all pernicious provisions. The truth is that many were removed, thanks only to the credible threat of an EU walkout, but red lines continue to be breached. Articles 10, 30, and 132 encourage the Islamic State's campaign to ban any criticism of religion. Articles 60 to 62 demonize the West, addressing only its sins of slavery, yet saying nothing of the massive Arab trade in African slaves, thereby politicizing that which should never be politicized. Article 1 breaches President Obama's red line by reaffirming what his government called the, quote, flawed 2001 declaration, a text that stigmatized Israel with false accusations. Myth number two that going to the conference means dialogue. In truth, we've been negotiating nonstop since August 2007. Going to the conference means endorsing a particular text and risks legitimizing the greatest perpetrators of racism. Ironically, many who now claim to support dialogue are Mideast states belonging to the Arab boycott office in Damascus or radical left campaigners who call for equally bigoted boycotts in the West. Myth number three that Durban too will help millions of victims. But can anyone name a single victim of racism who was helped by the 2001 conference and countless follow-up committees? Did Durban help a single victim of Sudan's racist campaign of mass killing, rape, and displacement against millions in Darfur? Did it help the women of Saudi Arabia subjected to systematic discrimination? Did it help gays executed by Iran? Even as President Ahmadinejad says, there are no gays in Iran. Did it help the two million black African migrants in Libya who, as we read in last week's International Herald Tribune, say they are treated like slaves and animals. To truly fight racism, Mr. President, we need to hold perpetrators to account. Tragically, Durban too does the opposite. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank you.